Hey guys, Michael Clark here with BAMWX. Thanks for checking out your latest weather yield forecast video. It is 50 degrees where I'm waking up here uh, just south of Indy uh, on August 21st, Wednesday morning. And uh, it is chilly uh, outside this morning. We are going to talk about a uh, heat wave coming, believe it or not. Temperatures getting into the low 90s, a lack of rainfall. And then I'm going to talk about our idea for winter. All right, maybe a legitimate winter coming for the first time in what seems like a stinking decade. I don't know. We'll see. We'll get into the latest. If this is valuable, if you find information useful, if you like the video today, make sure you share it, you subscribe, post it, whatever you do. Uh, again, Michael Clark here, CEO, co-founder of BAM Weather, and uh, it's, my, it's my crazy family there. Yeah, we'll talk about the latest now. Okay, August, it's been ideal. We're going to be dry the next couple of weeks. We'll talk about where the summer pattern's been and uh, what we're looking for harvest. And again, we're going to talk about that exciting uh, winter recap. Guys, here's a look at our summer forecast. How did we do? Well, our temperature forecast just didn't just didn't pan out the way we thought it would. Um, listen, we had a lot of signals emerging early on for heat. Um, we had the global wind pattern going where we wanted it to go. We had a significant cold pool of water underneath the Pacific Ocean we thought would make it to the surface of the, near the equator. And, um, we had a lot of things going that, that we thought would really um, uh, result in heat. And it, it just didn't, you know, and we're just wrong. It's just a, it's a missed forecast prediction. It's actually the hardest summer forecast pattern um, I've ever been a part of in the last 13 years in terms of temperatures. Uh, we just thought it would be much warmer. We've had a few bouts of heat. We did much better on precipitation. I'll kind of show you that map here on the bottom left. We thought there would be an active precipitation, active flow pattern for summer. We thought it would be wet um, with a lot of severe weather, and, and we did see that. We saw a lot of severe weather, a lot, so an, an absolutely active above normal severe weather season for summer. That part of the forecast did well. The heat really failed to show up. It is going to show up next week, though. Here's a look at where the temperatures are forecast to be really, really warm from the overnight run of the European model in the day three to, to eight time frame. Really, guys, just about anywhere in here, uh, looking at significant heat, uh, even more so the obvious here, uh, where it's going to be really, really warm in that uh, three to eight day time frame across Iowa, Minnesota, or I'm, I'm sorry, Iowa, Missouri, um, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas there. This little snippet that you see here, this is off of our, our application platform, Clarity, where we look at minimum, likely, and maximum outcomes from temperature, rainfall forecast, snowfall, ice, anything, you name it. And uh, whenever the likely is really far to the right of near the max, there's strong ensemble support for the heat. Okay, the low end outcomes, there's really not, we're not getting much favor right now on a cooler risk here. Um, and so the confidence is somewhat higher than average for significant heat coming. When we look at precipitation to date for August, you know, it's been dry across to Iowa, uh, South Dakota, northern Nebraska, uh, portions of uh, uh, Illinois, the southern Illinois and, in, and northern Illinois too. It's been wet in the central portion of the state. You can see where Debbie went up the coast there, right? Old Deb right there up the east coast just, just flooded some folks down there. Uh, very, very dry across Texas in the deep south and, of course, out there across the far western country portions of the country. <sighs> Rainfall-wise, I mean, when you look at it uh, to date, um, when you look at the, the ranks, Iowa, top third driest August, really, uh, on record, but it's been drier. It's been way drier before. Um Elsewhere, just kind of what you'd expect, I guess, seasonal. I don't know, just kind of normal in the middle of the road. Um, obviously, historically wet in the northeast, where, again, where the remains of that hurricane went through. Um, to date, for August 1st to now, the first 20 days have been cooler than average in the primary U.S. growing regions. No question about it. Very hot in Texas and the deep south. All right. The ranks for temperatures, if you're in the yellow, right, if you're in here, you're running top third, um, you know, coolest. In the last 132 years, right? It's it's been really really cool here. It's poor drawing, but you you get my illustration there. It's just been cool, all right. Uh, here for August to date, um, summer to date, precip June one to now, you know, the wettest uh, corridor uh, obviously has been where a lot of the thunderstorm cluster activity went throughout the summer, uh, right in through here, and uh, you can see just where how wet it's been, and it's unbelievable how dry it's been in these two spots. 
it's it's really quite remarkable. Uh, South, South Central Ohio, um, one of the driest summers on record. Uh, in the last 132 years, a, a chunk of the state ranking 126. Um, so flirting with top five, top six, the driest stretches on summer to record there as poor folks in southern Ohio just did not have a good year uh, for the crop there. Um, and then you go you go just a couple hundred miles north and west. It's some of the wettest we've seen ever to date. And that's that flow pattern. That's that northwest flow that, you know, we were worried about. 60-day rainfall anomaly. I mean, these guys are still getting left out. It's it's really quite remarkable. And, and it's such an isolated occurrence because it's been really wet east. It's been really wet west. Um, you know, southern and central Ohio. West Virginia there, it's painful to see. Uh, last 60 days, it has actually ended up uh, boating below normal uh, northern Nebraska, western Iowa right there. For the most part, the rest of the primary U.S. growing regions, uh, you've been wet for the most part, at to above normal rainfall the last 60 days, okay? Uh, when you look at summer-to-date temperatures, summer-to-date temps have just been middle of the road. I mean, nothing to... Nothing to, to, to you know, be concerned with. It's just been kind of normal, really, I guess you could say. Um, when you look at uh, the, the whole thing since the, the, the start of it over the last 90 days, um, there's actually a, a pocket here where air has, has came out to be a tad cooler than average by a, a degree or so. Um, yeah, it's been warm across the, the south. And this pattern that you see here, this may be the a preview of winter. Uh, <laughs> Although it's going to get pretty warm here, I think, coming up. Rainfall the next seven days, there's not much. I mean, if anything, this could even be overdone in Illinois and, and, and Iowa. It's a dry pattern. This is a look at the ensemble uh, probability, the rain chances, you know, from 100 different weather models out of Indianapolis. I mean, high end, seven one hundredths over the next 10 days. It's just dry. It is cool. I mean, right now I'm sitting here recording. It's, it's uh, 50, 51 degrees. It's uh, it's crisp. It's 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 amazing out here. Um, and again, you know, I've, I'm I'm backed up to corn and crop that that surrounds me. I'll, I'll show you real quick. It 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 looks really really good. And uh, I think I showed you guys last week, but I'm surrounded by it. You know, um, and that corn over there looks great. I've I've looked at it several times. A lot of the a lot of the stocks have two ears on them. You know, so corn around this part this part of the area looking really really good. Um, Temperatures, uh, though, are gonna they're gonna warm back up for sure. The pattern overall for rain, <clears throat> it, it still next week favors an overall uh, probably below normal precipitation look. The only chance I think for seeing above normal rain coming in the next few weeks is gonna come from any potential tropical systems that may work their way up in here. It's just not an active pattern. It's just not right now. It doesn't look to be temperatures. Next week, there's a three to five day period of heat. I want to make sure I note that. I want to make sure you guys know, and I showed it to you. It's it's going to get really hot here for three to five days. But then another front's going to come through. And that's been kind of the theme this summer. I just showed you that. We get hot for a few days, and then a front swings through. Okay, could it bring some rain? Sure. It's not that it won't rain at all. It's just drier than normal is the thought process there. The 16 to 30 day outlook favors below normal temperatures to the east much above normal temperatures to the west. Equal chances here across portions of Illinois, Indiana, down and through the deep south. All right. Um, when you look at rainfall, again, it's not a super active pattern. Better rain chances across the northern tier and the far western third of the growing regions. Dry, hot, dry, hot in Texas. I can't say it enough. Just scorching and dry down there. It's brutal. Tropical threats in this time frame may yield the better chances for rainfall risks into the Ohio Valley at this time, but right now uh, we'll have to kind of monitor that. The September outlook hinges significantly on just that. Okay, if something tropical doesn't come up in here, a lot of this area is going to bode drier. You're just going to end up being drier. Um, we have a lot of, of, of indications that a few tropical risks can emerge here in September and work their way up through there. That's why there's an above normal forecast there. But the risk is a drier Ohio Valley and a wetter Southeast. You know, if the front comes in and carries the, the front, the, the thing out of here, you're not gonna get it, right? September temperature outlook, probably cooler than average in the East. Above normal warmth in the Western half of the grain belt, cooler than average in the Eastern half of the grain belt is the general idea right now. 
uh, indications are that October and November will will get warmer for sure for now. Um, but you know, hey, I won't complain about a cooler September in the east, uh, especially if it's not going to do a whole lot in the way of rainfall. What are the seasonal ideas telling us? Well, right now we have just been kind of uh, teetering really since May in this cool, neutral. In okay, sorry about that. We uh, my 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 recorder locked up, so I'm going to hope that this this uh, add into the video works. But essentially, we looked at years that um, struggled to reach La Nina, but then eventually kind of reached a, a weak status of La Nina. We look at also the latest seasonal forecast idea. Uh, the average, the dynamical uh, average from the, the weather output this, uh, models here, the statistical average too, everything is, it's right at weak La Nina, right? And it's this blue dashed line where all that data is. It's a cool neutral to a weak La Nina, okay? Um, and that's kind of where we fall. That's kind of where we're basing our seasonal projections off of right now, all right? Best, best shot here. Um, September, October, November, best outlook or analogs right now, looking at the current state of the oceans would be, there is a cooler risk in here where there can be troughs, there can be tropical risks, there can be fronts that come through and bring cooler shots of weather at times. There's not an overwhelming signal for any early season frost or freeze. With that said, with that said, it wouldn't shock me for there to be an outside risk of this occurring because we've seen potent cold fronts already in August. We've seen early season fronts coming through. So just because it's not strongly supported right now doesn't mean it can't happen. So it wouldn't shock me to see an early season strong cold front that can bring some cooler temps in. Um, overall, the, the wettest ideas would come across the Great Lakes getting into October and November. Generally, guys, it's a drier autumn fall forecast. It's a drier harvest outlook right now. Generally speaking, I don't see major concerns. I see on time probably harvest, on time normal, normal getting the stuff out of the ground. And that brings us to the, the actual forecast. Um, again, a lot of this that you see here in terms of that above normal precip in the Ohio Valley, a lot of this is going to be dependent on if a tropical system can work its way through here. If it doesn't, this this may end up being at or below normal, if a, even at that rate. Um, there will and can be rain with fronts that come through. Overall, when you when you split the the growing regions down the middle, the eastern part of the of the of the U.S. is going to be at to below normal temperatures for fall. The western part's going to be at to much above normal temperatures for fall. So probably a, qu a much quicker end to everything um, with the heat in terms of the growing process in the central and western U.S. where there's more warmth um, and cooler in the uh, Ohio Valley here for the fall forecast right now is a generalized idea. Again, with no big concerns. Early winter ideas based on a cool ne uh, neutral Enzo to weak La Nina. And a, a big negative PDO. The thought process right now is that there absolutely can be some cold air to work with. There can be um, a, a certainly a, a cold Midwestern winter for sure this year. Based on this, warmer along the coastal regions, um, especially up into the northeast and across the, the deep south is where some of the warmer signals are emerging right now. But it could certainly be uh, one of the more, uh, you know, kind of classic colder Midwest winters here with this signal um, you know, with the, the, with the sample size that we have, it's, it's decent. There's quite a few years supporting that, uh, that colder look there, right? And then this here being the uh, precipitation outlook, uh, absolutely supporting a, a, a weak signal here for above normal precip, meaning a colder and perhaps snowier winter here across the Midwest. Listen, in the last 10 years, we haven't had a lot of that. The last 10 years have not been significantly cold and snowy winters. We've we've seen a lack thereof of it, really. Uh, maybe this year is is one that gets back to more of a traditional winter uh, in the mid early 2000s that the Midwest we might have been used to seeing based on the oceanic uh, setup right now. So we'll continue to watch all of this for you. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to us at any time. Thanks for watching. Share it with a friend and we'll see you next week.